how to make a straw flute. Now, it's very important that you find the following materials. You'll need at least two straws. One can be a practice one that you're trying to figure out and practice uh, working with. Other one might be one that you really want to get just right. You're going to need two pens. Now, what's important is it doesn't have to be pens. It could be markers if you have two markers. Uh, but I found using pens to help you in this assignment is a lot easier. You'll also need a pair of scissors. Uh, hopefully you have good scissors that cut uh, pretty well uh, because we're going to be cutting into the straws and we got to make sure we do it safely and correctly. Before we start, the way we're cutting the straws, they can become a little sharp. So you have to be very careful and follow my instructions on how to cut them so that they're safe. And second most, ask a parent to help out if you do not think it's safe or you're unsure. With that disclaimer, let's get started. Typical straw. This is what it might look like. Pretty straightforward. And then this is my straw that I made for my flute. Now let's look at the differences. This flute, I cut a mouthpiece. Here, I cut our finger holes that we're going to be put our fingers on. And I even shortened the bottom just a little bit because it helped change the sound. Very important, what's so great about this assignment, it will show you that music can be changed by the length or size of the instrument, or in this case, instrument tubing. Think trumpet, think flute, think trombone, think a big instrument like a French horn or a tuba or a baritone horn, when it has all those tubing, basically it's the same thing. So you're creating your own instrument that's going to work almost the exact same way as any one of those. I want you to pinch one end of it, pretty hard, pinch, 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 and make sure your thumb is covering all of that right there, just the top part, so that we get like a, almost a full inch. If you have a line on your straw, try to line up the straw so it's right in the middle where you bend. This will help you cut later. All right, I'm going to put it on my mouth and I'll bite that and I'm going to hold it for just a few seconds. <laughs> Done. That's what it should look like at the tip, nice and flat. Okay, the next part is, before you get the scissors, we're going to measure in two ways. First, double check that you have a thumb amount pinched. With your scissors, you're going to cut very carefully uh, what shape, where it's got a small top, it's going to grow out on the sides, and then it's going to have sort of a flat bottom. That's the shape we want. Notice how on all the ones I've cut, they all have that trapezoid. Flat top, sides angled, and then nice and leveled on the bottom. Here's another one so you can see it. Flat top, angled sides, and then nice and even on the bottom. And one more. Even though this one's really small, you can still see flat top, angled sides, lined up on the bottom. All right. I'm going to carefully cut. And remember, if you have a line on your straw, use that line so it's the middle of your straw, the very middle, and that will help you later. I'm going to cut off. If this is my thumb, I'm going to start about halfway of my thumb. Halfway of my thumb. That's where I'm going to begin that first cut. So here's my thumb. About halfway. That's where I'm going to cut. When you cut, do it at such a careful slight angle, not too much towards the middle. And remember, you can cut it more than once if you need to. I'm just going to do a very careful cut. Hopefully yours looks just like that too. Don't forget, you want it to have more than one straw just in case you make any mistakes. And if you do make a mistake, it's actually really easy to fix it. All right, now on the other side, still lining up that red line in the middle because it's going to help me measure later. Carefully match up where I'm going to start. Remember, halfway on your thumb. Halfway. I'm going to carefully cut. Watch your fingers. Okay. Now, this is an okay top. 
it actually needs to be a little thinner. So this, let me show you a big straw. See how the on my big straw example, it's pretty thin right here. This is not thin. It's too thick. So I'm going to go back and make sure when I cut it, I get a little thinner. So remember I said you can fix it more in more than one way. Okay, that's looking good. I'm going to check the other side. Okay, that's looking nice. Everyone see that? Flat top. It's lined up on the bottom, angled sides, trapezoid shape. Okay, I'm going to put it back in my mouth. Now I'm going to chew on it a little bit again. Look how I cry. Nice and flat. Yay. Wipe the spit off because you don't want that on you. All right, so very important to create a good sound. This has to be really close to touching, but not touching all the way. You want a little bit, and you can play with this shape a little bit. Let's go ahead and do a practice blow, because I know you've been waiting to do this. When you put it in your mouth, be careful. Don't poke your tongue. Don't poke your lips. Very carefully place it in your mouth, almost so that that whole thumb amount is inside your mouth. Put your lips around it, and you're going to have to take a while using a little pressure with your lips to press on the straw slightly. You're also going to need to pull the straw in and out of your mouth to kind of find the right place. Let's go ahead and see if I can get a good practice blow. If you're getting no sound, pinch it a little bit more. Maybe mine needs to be closer together. Remember, it's going to take a lot of experimentation. Oh, did you hear that? So if this is my mouth, it would go in. My lips would close slightly like this. My tongue would not be touching or blocking anything right here in my mouth. And the airflow can go through and it vibrates these two. This is the exact same way that a oboe, not an elbow, an oboe produces a double reed that rubs together to create that buzzing sound. So you're basically creating a little oboe or bassoon is another type of instrument with a similar double reed. Let me squeeze it back together, make sure it's nice and tight so it has just the amount of space. Okay, great. So what you have right now is just a noise. So we want to make it into an instrument. So this is when you need your two pens. It could also be two markers. So with your first pen, you're going to hold it up next to your, your flute, or sorry, next to your straw. That's going to be a flute in a second. And I want you to take your other pen, plug it, and you're going to make the following marks very carefully on your straw. Now, make sure if you have a line, you're following that line. You can see that red line that I have on mine. This helps you measure it the same way. And make sure when you cut these holes that your flute is flat this way. You want to look at your flute this way when you're marking. It should not be sideways like that. That's wrong. It should not be crooked. No, it's got to be flat so that you're seeing your trapezoid cut shape. This is the front that we're going to mark. Okay, so we're going to mark four marks. And the reason we're going to do four is that fourth one is going to be just in case. I want you to mark the middle about where the pen is. So I'm going to mark the middle just with doing a little line where you're going to make this mark is going to be at the top of the pen. This is where I want to mark right here. So I'm going to mark it right at the top. And now once you got those two marks, I have one here and one here in the middle. You're going to put another one right in the middle of those two. So you're, you don't even need a ruler. Just kind of find the closest middle. I'll double check that you have your three marks. Top, uh, middle of the pen, top of the pen, and then in the middle of those two marks. We're going to create one more mark. This is a backup one, an emergency one. This mark is going to go right here in the middle of the bottom of the pen and the middle of the pen. Put it right there. You may not even need to use this, but it's a an emergency one just in case. And I'll show you why we needed it 
whenever we finish our, our lesson. All right, before you cut, if you're not comfortable using your scissors, ask a friend or a sibling, ask a parent to help. This and you're gonna do two Vs, or you're gonna make two lines. It's gonna be like a little V that you're cutting out. Cut this way, cut this way, and you'll pull out that piece. All right. So let me show you with my flute. See how I have a little semicircle. Those are the ones I cut. It doesn't have to be that big. It's actually be very small. All right, so I'm gonna find that top mark. When I cut, I'm gonna squeeze the straw just enough that I get it a little flat when I cut. You don't have to do it very hard, just enough that it's flat when you cut so it's easier. All right. Squeezing at the top line, very carefully cutting a little line in. I'm gonna double check that I got a good cut into it. I did, awesome. I'm gonna flip it over so I can get the other side of that line. Remember, it doesn't have to be very big. It's the smaller, the better, because when you pull it out, it's gonna actually look bigger than you think. So there's my hole. See how it's not that big, because it's perfect to cover with your finger, just small enough to cover with your finger. All right, that's my first hole. Yeah. I'm gonna go on to the second hole, the second line that you made. Once again, giving it a squeeze, I'm going to carefully cut a line into the straw, slightly at that little mark I made, while I'm pinching it slightly, and then same thing. Okay, there's my second hole. All right, I'm gonna move on to the third hole. Remember, we may not even use that fourth hole, so leave it. You might not need it at all. All right, getting ready, doing my squeeze, doing my light cut. Hopefully, your holes look pretty close to mine and they're not too big. Remember, if you make a mistake, you have more than one straw to go back and double check it, and they're right. almost to equal distance apart. If yours sounds good, this is actually the stopping point and you'll be fine. When you play a flute, you put your left hand on top. So whichever your hands that you hold up and makes an L shape, my L shape is here, that's the one I'm gonna hold. And I'm going to cover that first hole with my first finger, cover the second hole with my second finger, and the third hole, just like that. And you can use your other hand to support the flute right here. And I'm gonna get back to my flute Placing it carefully in my mouth. Let me adjust. Remember, you're gonna have to play with this a few times until it really stays put and has the right sound. Okay, I got one clear sound. Remember, you wanna keep a good airflow so it's consistent. Ah, okay, I'm getting closer. I'm feeling my pinch right about here on my lips. Oh, so notice how I lifted a finger each time away from the hole to produce a different note. In my ear, I hear do do. They're really far apart. So if you don't like that sound, you might have to make adjustments. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and cut that fourth hole. All right, what I'm gonna do this time, I'm gonna cover those three holes again, and then my other hand is gonna cover that fourth hole. Now it's very important, you have to cover the hole all the way with your finger. The thumb, the finger pad of each finger has to cover the hole completely in order for you to get the right sound. So double check that you're holding it. Let's Let see what difference I might get this time. Ooh, I like that sound better. I don't like these three sounds back and forth as much as I like these 
sounds back and forth. No. Let me see if I can play a song because I think I have a good uh, three note melody. can really hear how I turn this into an instrument with a straw and scissors and a couple of pens. That's something that's quite amazing. So make more than one. If you don't like the sound, you could also do something else. If, you, if I remember the first one I showed you, I actually cut off the bottom slightly. I shortened the tubing. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to cut it off just a little bit and see if that makes the sound I like better. So that's just one flute you can make. You can make a big one. You can make a, a different color ones. Oh, and guess what? I got these over the last few days. You can find straws whenever you grab a, a bite to eat. Or I like getting coffee and they'll have big straws like this. Or if you go to 7-Eleven, get your slushy, your big, uh, uh, big gulps, you can get those straws too. So I hope you enjoyed your straw flute. Work on it and I can't wait to see who of you out there makes one and can play actual notes? All right. Thank you so much.